Whoopee. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even get my camera on this table. People, <laughs> people have no problem arguing, arguing, arguing. Oh, we're putting this together. We're Sherlock holmes -ing it. Who's ready? Who's with me? Let's do it. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. I'm Trish if we haven't met, and if we have met, welcome back. How are you? What's happening in your corner of the world? It's spring here, you can see green grass, but we've had pretty rough weather. What are you gonna do, right? You just gotta be glad it's not snow, I guess. <laughs> so, <laughs> hi. Welcome to Breed Study 13, also known as BS13. This is the channel where I document my fiber journey. That can be all kinds of different things. So weaving, spinning, knitting, I've crocheted a little, felting. Um, sometimes you even get to see other crafts that I do. Some people like that, some, I don't know, probably just skip over it, but that's cool. I also hang out with my best buddy who, let's see, can you see him? There he is. <laughs> so right now we're working on a breed study and if you want to spin along with me, there's a playlist. You can go all the way back to the beginning if you want. You can search for just the breeds you want, anything you want to do. And we're on episode 13. I have a breed study worksheet. There will be a link below. It is linked on Pinterest. I just hit a link a picture of it because I couldn't figure out how to upload the whole file. And I'm keeping my breed study worksheets in this binder. Isn't it cute? For my primary source of information, I'm using the Fleece and Fiber source book. I love it. It's great. And I also use as a backup the Spinner's Guide to Fleece, which is also great. There's a link to the breed study as well in the description box. However, I'm going to be adding a few species and potentially one or two breeds at the end. I felt like it could have covered more, so I added some myself. There will be a project at the end. It's still weeks away. It's weeks away, guys. Weeks. This week, we'll be spinning Tease Water. Tease Water. And Texel. And I am quite excited about both of these. I'm not going to say the Tease Water scares me, but I don't have like super high hopes that I'm just going to love it so much. But you never know. There's been surprises. I'm guessing there's going to be more surprises before we're done. And I'm ready for once. All right. Okay. I have the Fleece and Fiber source book on my Kindle. Again, it's linked below so you can buy it in whatever format makes you happy. Tease Water is a British breed. Uh, there's been a bunch. There's quite a few sheep in the whole of the British Isles, let's say. It's named for the River Tees. Makes sense, right? Tease Water. There's water in the river. You hope. <laughs> it says it's an 85 mile river, which I didn't know that um that goes out all the way to the north sea basically original tease waters were very similar to lincolnshire and leicester sheep um we did we go over leicester i don't think we actually had to spin any leicester i think maybe we need to add that to our breed study what do you think now it says robert bakewell who was like a famous a famous sheep breed development contributor he used Lincolnshire and Leicester sheep in the development of new Leicesters, and then they have been introduced to Tees waters over the years. And it also says after that, they've been pretty isolated. If you isolate the breed and don't introduce genetics from other breeds, generally, it should stay pretty true to breed after that. I don't know when this book was published. I could look, but I'm not gonna look at this exact moment. Um, and then I'll know for next time. But it does say that, literally it says today, which would mean when the book was written. There were North American breeders trying to develop Tees Waters on my side of the Atlantic, using imported semen to cross breed to use of other long wools. Tees Water is a long wool, and that doesn't just mean the lock is long, it has other characteristics that they all have pretty much in common. Oh, and then it said, then the offspring were bred again with Tees Water, with purebred Tees Water, and they do it again and again, and by the fifth generation, it's more than 96% pure, and then that's considered a purebred American Tees Water. So probably by now, because I know this book has been out for a while, probably by now there are plenty of fifth generation American Tees Waters. 
So they have long, lustrous, shiny wool. Lustrous doesn't, I guess, doesn't that mean shiny? Maybe not. That's really what Tease Water is all about. In fact, often, maybe you guys know this and maybe you've seen this but you didn't realize what you were seeing, but often you'll see Tease Water locks that's, um, really the most frequent one that I see they'll be tied up and dyed in a million different colors they'll be really long like six inches plus maybe as much as 10 or 12 I don't know but they'll be these really long locks they'll dye them sometimes in stripes or all different colors and tie them up in a little bow and sell them that way because you can spin them just like that Basically, that's the only way I've ever spun tees water before still in the lock and dyed fancy colors So this is another one we had this before with I think it was the Swaledale, wasn't it? The Swaledale and Herdwick on paper seem very similar. So it's saying here that the same thing um, is happening with Teeswater and Wensleydale. They're both long wools. Wensleydale traditionally has not been my favorite. Wensleydale fleeces are generally heavier and Teeswater sheep do a little bit better in meat production. I'm gonna show you the picture because I just came upon it and it's cute. So there is the picture of the Teeswater sheep. So Teeswaters have been bred for white wool. The samples that they received for the book were a warmer white than similar Wensleydales. So I will say that that is definitely the case with this. Okay, you can see this in this sample that I've got. This label is not white, it's like, I don't know, light beige, what would you call this color? Linen. And the sample is even just a little darker than that, but you can also see a lot of shine in the light. See that? That part I'm totally on board with. Teeswater wool may have a slightly greater sense of body than Wens Wensleydale, like a weighted silk. Interesting. Okay. To be honest, I would say that that could be true of some Wensleydales. I have some right here, hang on. This is a Wensleydale yarn. Uh, some of you guys have seen me ply this and maybe spin it too, I don't remember. And I would say that this feels very similar to a weighted silk. And you can, let me show you how drapey this is. So look, see that? You can just literally tell in the hank that it's just super drapey, it definitely, feels like I mean it doesn't feel the same texture wise but weight wise and drapiness wise it definitely feels like a weighted silk. Can we argue with the experts? I don't know. It seems like people have no problem with that. <laughs> people have no problem arguing anymore. All bets are off with the internet. Am I right? I am. So tease water facts. Seven and a half to 18 pounds and then it says often 12 to 15. That's a humongous 18 is very big uh 12 to 15 inches what how am i even gonna spin this oh that's the first clip thereafter twice a year about six inches basically it says that after the first clip you would shear twice a year and you'd get about a six inch staple i would say that's been more my experience but i guess we'll see 30 to 36 microns so fairly coarse in the kind of range of what we've worked with. Very long wavy locks with brilliant luster and a smooth surface. And it says warm clear white for their natural color. I'm gonna show you the picture of the locks. I don't always do this. Okay, I don't know, how do I say this? I have found that there's a wide variation over a lot of breeds in what the locks may look like and still be a good representative example. So I haven't felt comfortable showing a lot of these pictures because they show like one or maybe two and it doesn't always cover what I would consider the full range. Again, I probably shouldn't argue with the experts, but <laughs> here we are arguing with the experts. <laughs> but I'm gonna show you because I do think the picture in here is very representative of pretty much every tease water I've ever seen. Now for usage, um, it says it makes brilliant colors because of the luster. Again, I've said I often see dyed up locks that are like all beautiful colors ready to sell. The locks can be spun or woven as locks. Why have I never done that? To give texture or use unspun to make a fleece rug. You can open it with flick by flicking. The really long fibers are kind of harder to flick that you can comb 
but you need to do very long strokes. Oh, and it also says it's used for doll's hair a lot. Interesting, we're not gonna be doing that. Best known for luster and length, along with being fine for a long wool. It's time to measure. It, it, it does feel much finer than a long than long wools usually feel to me but it's weird it's like almost feels a little grippy on itself all right <laughs> I'm anticipating that this is gonna be really long I don't even really know Woo! okay check that out <laughs> I guess I should have worn a black shirt so you could see it against so I'm <laughs> wow okay I'm basically at either end right here and it is a solid nine inches and it is actually quite fine so I'm gonna go ahead and spin this with a short forward draw I am actually excited I think that I'm gonna like this more than I thought let's go spin it are you ready I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see, but there is a really pretty kind of pearly shine to these. And I've got them all wrapped up for the turkey ham pieing, so I'm going to fly. Let's talk about the tea's water. Where is it? It's right here. It is done. I will say it surprised me how much I actually really liked it. I did not expect to enjoy it so much. Partially I think because in my brain I've always used the locks and the locks are often a little bit almost like they have so much body to them. I don't know how to explain how they feel. But I think I've always thought that I would not like top because I thought it would be too like prickly and bristly. It's not prickly. It is very drapey. I'm going to show you in the... Look at... I mean, that is just so drapey. Just a minute. Luther wants to come up. It's very drapey. I got only 30... Four yards hang on wait 30 yeah 34 yards so that was kind of surprising it must just be because it's so dense which I mean it's happened before where we've had a lot less <laughs> obviously there is no look at no bounce at all which also makes it nice for lace and it has a pretty kind of like sheen to it it's i wouldn't call it shiny but uh, like some other ones we've seen already it's a little bit pearly and i just love it and i did not expect to like it in top form at all i have liked it before in locks it adds a lot of really cool texture i am shocked to be honest <laughs> So I'm shocked that I like it. I shouldn't be because I have found something good about practically everything we've spun in this thing, right? But hey, I don't know what to tell you. I guess I learned slow. I just, I enjoyed it a lot. Do I think I would use it for a sweater? Probably not, but maybe lace weight for like a lace shawl or something like that. Or I think it would make great warp and it would be very strong and it's pretty, but it wouldn't be prickly. So, 
So I think it would make great warp for my loom. So this was a love. I, I don't know what to tell you. Didn't think it was coming, but here it is. It's a love. We're on to the Texel. I am actually inordinately excited about this. I can't remember spinning it in the fleece study that I did way back when, but I know that I did. I just can't remember it in particular. And I have done no reading to prep for this, of course, because you guys know me. <laughs> I don't have time to prep. But I'm guessing it's a down breed or very similar to a down breed. It's got a little black stuck to it. But what I'm feeling just off the top of my head is that it feels very similar to the Cheviot. Um, and maybe Columbia maybe something that would have downbreed characteristics whether or not it would technically be a downbreed because of it where it its roots are um your guess is as good as mine but i guess we're about to find out and i really want to spin this I, and it's very like poofy and fluffy let's look shall we the sheep were named for the island of texel i'm probably pronouncing it wrong i do apologize that happens practically every week I don't know all the words in the world and I absolutely hate pronouncing things wrong, especially names, but it happens a lot. So you would think by now, just because of exposure therapy, I would be fine with it, but I still feel anxious about mispronouncing words. So feel free to correct me. It's okay. I don't mind. It's off the coast of the Netherlands and it says there interesting that's where the native sheep were crossed with lincoln and lester longwools in the mid 1800s of course same goal as always high quality meat high quality fleece that's what they were trying to do they were introduced to the u.s in 1985 so not very long ago some of you will think that's long ago but it actually isn't very long ago in the world of animal husbandry <laughs> Oh, and it says they quarantined them for five years when they came to the U.S. and then they were sent to breeders around the country. They're often thought of primarily as meat animals. So that does explain a little bit of what I was saying that it has characteristics similar to down breeds because those also were traditionally thought of as meat animals generally. And so the sheep, I don't know how to explain, say this. The fleeces were neglected isn't exactly the right word, but they weren't considered the high priority for quite a few years. If they are now, it's a relatively new thing, if that makes sense. I think that makes sense. And because of that, it says the breeder societies don't really have a lot of um, like standard fleece characteristics. One thing that's funny is that the, the only thing that it says breeder societies offer on the wool is they call it high bulk so i'm not sure if that means like very lofty or if it means that they get a lot a lot off of sheep high bulk what does that even mean oh it does say any black fibers are unacceptable because it was meant for industrial processing because if you want to dye for uniform color in textiles and produce the same thing over and over and over again, you need to start with, again, all one homogenous color, whether it be white or ecru or whatever. If you had dark fibers in it or unusual colored fibers, that fleece wouldn't get sold for commercial use. So I'm going to show you the picture. To me, they do, their faces do look a bit like Lester sheep, but maybe I'm making that up in my head. Now, it says a nice matte white fleece that can be used for everyday textiles, including socks, sweaters, outerwear, and blankets. Those things are at the finer, and then the coarser end, it can be fine for rugs. So also, this is one of those ones, and we've talked about a few of these before. If they're shorter, they can be carded, and they're great. If they're longer, they can be combed, and they're great. <sighs> I mean, a lot of these loftier fleeces have that characteristic i love it and it also says um because it's so lofty even worsted processed yarns will have better than average insulating properties so that means because of the loft and the squish and we've had a few breeds where i've mentioned that it doesn't matter if you i don't want to say it doesn't matter but even if you spin it worsted you can't um contain the loft 
that just comes out of this naturally. It's like when you know a person and like joy just bubbles out of them and you can't contain it and you can try but you can't do it. That's what these kinds of wools are like and we've had them before and I've, I've said I can spin this worsted and it's still going to be squishy and lofty. You can tell just by handling this that this is going to be that way. But because of that, because of all that loft, what happens is that yarn traps air. When you get these really squishy ones, and a lot of times they're also very springy, and I've showed the spring in some of the hanks, all those fibers inside are fluffing up and holding their crimp against each other so that means inside there it's basically a big tangle and inside that yarn there's all kinds of air trapped and that is a really good insulator so that's what they're talking about and that is definitely going to be one of these i can tell already and it also says there's something called a blue texel which is like a steel gray mm, to almost black oh gosh i wish i had some of that they're a separate breed in the netherlands texel facts yeah that means we're gonna spin soon so i get excited Please wait, seven to 12 pounds. That's like on the big end of medium, in my opinion. We all have kind of different ideas about that, but to me, that's what I would say. Staple length, three to six inches. For a meat breed, that is a very good. I don't know, good. That is very long for a meat breed. But it does make sense since they were crossed with some long wools that they would have a longer fleece than a lot of meat breeds. The diameter would be 28 to 33 microns might be as fine as 26, which is pretty fine for a meat breed for sure. And Australian textiles may be coarser, range, ranging 30 to 36. Not much luster, um, definitely I'm seeing that. There may be some Kemp, I didn't see any, but while we're spinning, we'll know. I do not see any, and I'm really trying to look for it. We'll know soon. Locks are springy and a little crisp feeling, partially organized crimp, in fiber and locks. Natural colors, white for the benefit of mass producing. That's what it says word for word in here. And then there's blue, which are a separate breed. Using, dyeing, take color clearly. Low luster means they won't glisten. No big deal, I like that. It also says, like many breeds, that the individual fleece is gonna tell you how to process it. So length has a factor, how you want your yarn to come out has a factor. So basically you can do anything you want with this, but even if you do it, even if you spin it in a fully worsted style, so you comb it and then you spin it in uh, with a short forward draw, you are gonna get a lofty yarn no matter what. And I totally buy that. Cozy and sturdy blankets mats and pillows that offer nice cushioning because it's so lofty. Let's measure a lock so I can go spin this. I mean, I can't measure microns, but I would say coarseness wise, this is like medium, maybe a little bit on the finer end, just from feeling it. Wow. Okay, so for a meat breed, this is long. If I go any further out, am I pulling? Okay, I am at the ends. I know you can see some coming out, but if I go any further, it's actually gonna pull apart. That's how I know that I'm on one lock. See how I can kind of pull it and nothing pulls apart? That's how you know. This is six inches long. Okay, so because of that length, I will be able to still have some loft if I did a short forward draw, even with comb top, but I want even more loft. I want more spring. I want more squishiness. So I'm going to go ahead and use a short woolen draw. That means these fibers will get pulled off in a more disorganized way. They'll kind of, I don't want to say willy nilly, but it will be way more willy nilly than it would be if I did a worsted draw. And so what I'll get is more fibers inside the yarn that are just going in all different directions, which I want, and they'll make it loftier. Okay, let's go spin it.
We're on the tech sale. As I said, I cannot remember spinning it before, but I did spin it once before in the fleece study that I did. And it was a lot like I thought it was going to be. So it is extremely squishy and bouncy. And I've done this before to show you guys how much bounce back I get. <sighs> this is crazy. On one skein versus the other, look at this. <laughs> I mean, I expected a lot, but that is insane. I use the same Nitty Naughty to make these hanks. A lot of bounce and spring back, which I also expected just based on the sample and what we read. I did use a short woolen draw on this. I wanted to keep as much of that bounce as I could. It was so easy to spin. It literally just, I've said it before about a few different other breeds, it's just like it spins itself. All you gotta do is get the wheel going and before you know it, you're done. So I had 52 yards of this. You know, it is very fascinating to me how one ounce can be so different in amounts, especially when the truth is the thicknesses, like this is appears to be thicker, quite a bit thicker than this. But I got way more yardage than I did of this. It's kind of strange, right? It doesn't really make sense. That's why we're doing it. I personally think this would be great for a garment it does not feel prickly even straight up on my face, which is where I seem to notice it the most. I could wear this like as a hat, gloves, around my neck is another place where you kind of, a lot of people notice prickles. I feel nothing. I really like it. I will definitely be spinning more of this. I would love to know if this will felt, if I could hand, if I could wash it in the washing machine and it might not felt. I am so curious. Down the road, actually, I have planned to do some studying on, on that. Stay tuned for that. So overall, I loved this week. Isn't that great? I loved it. Um, they're super different, could not be more different really, unless one was black and one was white. Both of these are really, really cool for different purposes, so easy to spin and so beautiful. So it doesn't get any better than that. How could it be better? It couldn't. So next week we will be spinning Welsh. I think it's gonna be fun to spin. It's gonna be a bit more woolly a bit more primitive-y feeling. We also have Wensleydale. Wensleydale is one I just showed you earlier in this video. I have spun before a pretty fair amount. Um, and I have, well, the, the yarn that you saw earlier in the video, I processed myself from raw, or maybe I got it washed. Earlier in this video, we, it was also compared to the Teeswater pretty, significantly let's say and just in this little bundle I have to say it looks pretty similar it really does so next week is going to be interesting I can't wait I hope you come back and join me thank you so much for being on this journey with me it wouldn't be the same without you I will see you guys next week with Welsh and Wensleydale thanks I love you bye